All right, we are now recording. I am now going to start sharing my screen again. Perfect. Okay. Can we see the robot again? <laughs> we can see the robot. Awesome. All right. Thank you. So thank you folks for taking time out of your day um, for us to share uh, October's Fantastic and Free First Fridays Resource of the Month Wakelet. Uh, this is actually the first time we have featured a non-content tool as our resource of the month. Um, in the past, we have only done sort of resources that are free and revolve around math or reading or employability skills. And so this is sort of a, a new step for us because we believe it's a really powerful tool that aligns um, super well to our mission of bringing together free and open education resources to make them more accessible to adult learners. So I'm going to be kicking this off and then handing it off to much more competent folks. But um, before we begin, if you have not read the uh, blog post, you can visit Crowded Musings. Um, it was the most recent blog post, and actually the writer of that blog post is going to be joining us in a moment. But if you're not familiar with Crowded Learning, um, one of the things to point out here is that as, as what you do know about us is that we, we do a lot of, of free things. We provide lots of free resources. We make people aware of uh, some of the free things that are out there. But sort of our, our big sort of goal is to take all of those things and really rely on the power of the crowd. So great resources are out there in various places, and we've been starting the process of doing alignments of these various resources um, to the college and career readiness standards. But if you've heard me talk about these in any way, shape, or form, the things that we're doing right now don't constitute a curriculum. It's just sort of the building blocks that allow instructors to piece together what could be a curriculum. And we believe that a lot of that work um, is, is human work, hence the name, um, The Humans Are Coming. And Wakelet is a tool that we believe helps us sort of take the next step from all of those resource alignments that we've been doing where we can take different lessons and activities from different sources and pull those together into a single wakelet um, collection, which you're going to learn more about how that is done in a second. That is a human process, and that re uh, really requires instructors and educators thinking about, well, how do these different building blocks fit together to give us something that can be meaningful to a student and can help us provide additional, uh, in particular, mobile-friendly options to our learners um, both in and out of class. And so I'm really excited to share with you this tool. Um, today's webinar, as I said, is going to be mostly folks other than me. So we are going to start with an introduction to Wakelet. And um, coming to us from Manchester, England, is Mr. Gadal. He is the head of partnerships for Wakelet. And he and I have been talking for some months now as we started sort of realizing some of the overlaps that our two organizations have in terms of our goals of curating really great content and making it more available to instructors and learners. Um, following that, we're going to look at Wakelet and how it's being used in adult education. And doing that for us today is Ashley Winkle, who comes to us from Tyler, Texas. She's the director of distance learning, uh, a high school uh, equivalency educator, and she's also a technology coach. And then I'm going to sort of just end it by talking about some of the things that we're looking to do um, at Crowded Learning in using Wakelet as, as I said earlier, a tool to help us take the various component pieces that we have started pulling together for educators around the College and Career Readiness Standards into Table 11 and 12 and thinking about ways that we can sort of collectively work together to take those things and provide really useful resources for instructors and for learners using Wakelet. So, I'd like to introduce Ms. Bagadal. Um, Ms. Ba, you can go ahead and take over the screen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today. Um, if you just cancel your screen share, um, Jeffrey, then I should be able to share my screen and kick us off. Give me a moment. Okay, uh, could, could you just confirm, Jeffrey, that you can see my screen? 
I can. Fantastic. Okay. So yeah. So hello, everybody. Um, as Jeffrey said, uh, my name's is uh, Misba and I lead uh, the partnerships team at Wakelet. Um, we've been doing some really, really awesome work with CrowdEd Learning. Um, currently, our, our focus is on uh, K-12 and higher education, but um, I'm really excited after speaking with Jeffrey and hearing about what CrowdEd Learning is doing uh, to see how we can uh, get ideas from the adult learning community. And uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity today to explain to you, those of you who don't know what Wakelet is, um, what it is, a little bit of the history behind the, uh, the platform, um, how you can use it, how you can collaborate with others on it, um, and also how are educators using it. So um, it shouldn't take too long. It's a, it's a pretty simple platform, if we don't say so ourselves. Um, and I guess we'll just dive into the history of it. So uh, Wakelet's a content curation platform. And, and what content curation is, for those of you who don't know, it's essentially the act of taking um, a, a piece of content and then putting it into another place and then adding things to it, contextualizing it, adding your own thoughts and ideas. The same way, I guess, that a museum or an art curator would do their job. Um, we like to think that we empower people to do that online with any content that they find. And um, Wakelet first started, I guess, as a response to this kind of over-reliance that we have on algorithms and AI and that type of thing. Um, that's why our phrase, the humans are coming, we think is quite powerful. Because even though algorithms and AI and that type of thing, they do amazing jobs of indexing lots of different information at once and finding patterns and that type of thing. Um, when it comes to telling stories, when it comes to putting pieces of content together in, in a meaningful way, humans are the best at it. Like machines just can't do that. So um, that's our slogan really, the humans are coming because we want to give people uh, the opportunity to put together their own collections and tell their own stories using their own content and content that they find on the web. So, um, I mean, if I took an example here, which I think will be really good to lead me into actually creating a collection anyway, um, if I was to type in to Google something like climate change, I get over a billion results. And um, it's not the best place anymore to really start your research because if you think about it, you're never gonna get through these. It's, it's, it's such a huge amount. And on the first page, it tends to be trending news, uh, government websites and that type of thing. So even though it's you know in 0 0.50 seconds being able to index and show over a billion results, when it comes to telling a story, it's actually quite difficult to do that just from these links. And obviously it goes on to page 10 and you know there's that famous saying, if you ever want to hide a dead body, the best place to do it is page three of Google because nobody goes to it, right? So what we like to think is that any content that people take, any, any content that people find online, we want to give them the, the opportunity and the platform to save that content uh, and then share it to whoever they want. So let's put this into context a little bit. Um, right now, I'm in my Wakelet home area, and this is where I create collections. And collections are essentially the thing that Wakelet is built on. Collections are lots of different pieces of content that you've put together, and that can be anything, which I'll, I'll come to in just a few moments. But let's say I'm uh, doing a class on climate change, and I would like my students to um, understand a little bit more about climate change, and I wanna share some resources that I found on the web. What I do is I click, a new, I click the new uh, collection button, and I can give this a title. So right now what I'm doing is I'm building my, my collection. I can also add a cover image. So this is really important just to make the, the, the collection a little bit more engaging. And at Wakelet, you'll notice as you kind of venture through the site and understand a little bit more about it, the emphasis really is on it being visual and being engaging because we think that the more colorful and the more visual and engaging, uh, the more visual something is, the more engaging it is. Um, and that's the feedback that we tend to get from educators as well. So as I'm adding an image, I can either upload an image from my computer or I can click choose from library. Now we've partnered with Unsplash to bring these awesome free high definition images that you can use and it almost acts as like a search engine. It's completely safe for work. So let's just click mountain, choose this nice image here, and that's going to become my uh, cover image. I can also do the same for a background image as well. So let's just pick this one just for the sake of time. And then I can give my collection a description. So I can say here are a number of resources that should be helpful in learning about climate change. And this is where the magic starts, right? This green button here 
is going to be your best friend once you start get started on Wakelet. Because when you click it, it opens up this plethora of content that you can actually add into your Wakelet collection. So I'm going to go through these really, really quickly. Now, the most basic is just pasting a web address. So let's say I'm on YouTube and I found this really cool video of Greta Thunberg. Uh, I can copy this just from there, go back to my Wakelet collection, click paste. And what our platform is doing now is it's scraping that and it's embedding it into the collection. And I can do the same thing with loads of different types of content. So whether it's a, uh, an article, whether it's a video like I just showed you, whether it's a, uh, a podcast, I can just copy and paste these things into my Wakelet collection. As you can see very quickly, it's just embedding that content into the collection. Uh, the really cool thing about this as well is that it's not just links I can add. Um, I can search for things directly from YouTube as well. So let's say you're putting a quick class together and you just want to put something from YouTube on climate change and you're familiar with it. I can just grab that, click add, and that adds straight to my Wakelet collection. I can do the same thing with tweets as well. So I can, I'm not sure if I've added my Twitter, but let's just take a look. Yep, so once I've connected my Twitter account, I can just search for anything from Twitter and click the plus button and click add, and that brings a tweet in. Um, I can add from my bookmarks. All that means is that as you're going across the internet, you can just save things to Wakelet without putting them in a collection. If I click bookmarks, that will open up all the things that I've saved, and then I can just quickly add them to, a, uh, to the Wakelet collection. Uh, any images, so let's say you've got some really cool infographics that you've put up, you can just add those to a collection. PDFs, we've connected with Google Drive as well. Uh, and also this really awesome thing, which is Flipgrid Video. I'm not sure if it will work just now, um, given that I'm using my camera, but if I put in my details here. I can connect my account to Flipgrid, and this brings up Flipgrid's camera. So I can actually record videos directly into a Wakelet collection without ever having to leave the site. So my camera switches on, I'm within Wakelet right now, and as you can see, Flipgrid's camera bounces right up. I can add all the uh, different things that Flipgrid's ca Flipgrid camera offers, things like stickers, text, and that type of thing. I can record a video, so I'll give it a try now. I'm doing 100 things right now on my computer, so might as well give it a try. Um, once the video is done, I can snap a quick selfie, click plus, and then that will again embed directly into the Wakelet collection. So this is really useful if you are putting together a set of resources for your students and you would like to contextualize those resources because you can just quickly record a video directly into the collection and say, speak directly to the class and tell them what it is that you want them to achieve from this lesson and so on and so forth. So this is a really neat um, integration that we've done with Flipgrid and it's pretty new. Um, so that's all there is to it, essentially. Uh, you just add content, add your own content. I can also add text as well. This is one thing that I missed, um, which is really cool, but I can add any text I want. Click save and that adds to the collection. Um, and then when I'm ready, I can then choose the privacy settings for this particular collection. So private means that only I can see this. So if you're working on a collection and you don't want to make it public yet, this is the best state for it to be in. Unlisted means that only people with the link to this collection will be able to view it. And public means that anybody can see it and it will appear on my profile. So I'll make it public for now. And over here, we've got enable copy. When I click this, that means that any student that I share this to who has a Wakelet account, they can actually copy this collection to their own account and add to it and uh, add their own content or just keep it for them to, to have a nice resource list there. And when I'm done, I click publish and exit. That then will save to my Wakelet uh, page and you can get a preview of what the collection looks like here. Now, as you can see, really cool thing is I can play these in line without having to ever leave the site. If I want to watch a video, it just jumps up like this. If I want to listen to a podcast, I can just hit play and it will play in line and I can interact with it all. And if I'm logged in, I can even like tweets and that type of thing. So you've got Twitter there. I can interact with tweets as I like as well. So that's all there is to it when it comes to creating a collection. And that's how most people are using Wakelet, just in the way that I showed you then, to just quickly copy and paste 
uh, resources across and then share them with whoever you want. Now there's lots of different ways that you can share a collection with people. If you click the share button here, you can either share a QR code, which is really useful if you're giving a class to people who are on devices because you can just put this on the, um, you can just make this big, put it on the, uh, the board, whatever you're using, and uh, they can just quickly scan that from their devices and get taken to the collection. Or you can share it to Google Classrooms, Remind, Google Teams, and all these other integrations here. The easiest way to do it though, is literally just copy the address. Anybody with this address now, um, if I send them an email, for example, with this link, they'll just jump directly into this collection, which I think is really, really awesome. Now, there are a few really cool features as well, which are new. And I know that um, one of the things that Jeffrey told me, which I found really interesting, was that a lot of teachers who are um, dealing with um, uh, adult education, um, a lot of their students might not necessarily be English speakers as their first language. Um, so what we've done is we've included Microsoft's Immersive Reader. So for those of you who don't, don't know, Microsoft have done this amazing job um, of trying to create uh, of trying to make content as accessible as possible for everybody. So anywhere that you see this little icon here, that will open up Immersive Reader. But the really cool part is, and we only just launched this just a few days ago, is if I take an article like this and I hover over it and click on read mode, that opens up the text of the article without me ever having to leave Wakelet and just allows me to focus on the text. So no ads, no distractions, just bam, it's just the text. And the really, really good, cool thing about this is that let's say one of my students isn't an English um, speaker or is English isn't their first language, or maybe they have um, some learning difficulties. If they just click immersive reader, that opens up Microsoft's amazing piece of software, and you have so many different accessibility features here. I can literally translate the text into over 60 different languages. So let's just pick Dutch. That translates the text really, really accurately as well, way better than Google Translate. Um, I've got loads of grammar options as well, so I can highlight syllables, I can highlight uh, nouns, verbs, adjectives, that type of thing, just to help with that grammar comprehension. Um, I can also make it play out loud as well. So if I click this, it will play the, the, uh, the text out loud. And if I click on certain um, uh, uh, words, I can get um, definitions of those words, uh, translation with um, loads of different options there. And I can also increase the size, the font. There's so many different things that you can do with this. And the really cool part about it is it just makes your content more accessible. So it means that whenever you're sharing something, you can rest assured that regardless of age, ability, language, people are gonna be able to enjoy the content that you shared, including your notes and everything else. So that's a really, really neat feature that um, we've just released, actually only came out yesterday. So you guys are seeing a really cool peak of it. Now, um, secondly, one of the things which we found is most popular with teachers, and this spans across every age group, is collaboration. And uh, Wakelet is awesome for collaboration. Let's say I've created this collection and I want the uh, students in my class to add content to this collection. So almost like crowdsourcing resources. And I can give them tasks. I can say, I want um, Josh to find articles about climate change from 2011. I want you to find climate change from a, a source which you think is more conservative or more liberal and so on and so forth. There's lots of different ways you can uh, play this out. But if I click contributors here, I can either invite people who are following me or in, send them an invite via email. But this is the really cool part. I can click via shareable link or code. And immediately, as soon as somebody scans this or goes to this link or copies this code, they will be able to immediately get into this collection whether or not they have a Wakelet account. So let's say I've shared this code with my students and they've copied it or it's up on the board. I'm gonna to go to an incognito tab now just so that I'm not signed into Wakelet. This is the Wakelet homepage, usually I'd log in, but in this case, I'm a student, I don't have an account, let's say I don't have time to make an account, I can just click enter code, type the code in, click join. This is now plugging me into the collection that I just made as a teacher. Put my name in and click add. And now I'm plugged into this collection and I'm free to add content to it. I can't do certain things like change the description, those critical things which should be in the control of the person who's actually had, got the account, um, but I can add content. So let's say my task has been, has been to find a uh, trending topic on climate change. I can go ahead, click add, paste it in, 
and I can also add notes. And the really cool part is I can actually justify why I've added this content because context is super important when it comes to curation. So I can click edit and I can change this to I found this article and it's interesting because, and I can then justify this content and, and customize it. Once I click publish and exit, that will then appear on that uh, collection and it will appear for everybody who's plugged into that collection as well, which is really cool. So if we go back to my original collection here and press refresh, the person who's collaborated with me, um, their content will now show on that collection and it will be able to, to say who put it in there as well. So there's that level of accountability. Just let it load for a moment. And then the article from uh, Michael should be in there. Yes. So this becomes really, really powerful when you want to create those collaborative assignments and you want everybody to get involved. And especially with the new read mode feature, it means that anybody can view this content. Um, very quickly as well, there are a few different layouts that I can choose on Wakelet. Remember at the beginning when I said that we tried to make it as visual as possible? Well, this plays into that really well. So depending on the type of content that I'm choosing to display here, I can choose a different layout. So this is called the media layout, which I'm in right now. And this displays content uh, in a really visual storytelling type way. But there's lots of different layouts, so I can have compact view. That just distills everything into kind of short links, which is really good for just sharing lists of resources. Uh, grid view, so this is really cool if you wanna compare different things uh, and if you're setting assign assignments where the student has a piece of content and then compares it on the other side. And then the latest, which is mood board view, which is my personal favorite. This is really cool. Mood board view basically is a mood board. Um, it, it allows content to be super visual. You can play everything in line. Uh, you can drag and drop stuff wherever you want to reorganize it. And it just adds that engagement and makes the content a lot more fun. So they're the different uh, uh, layouts that you can use uh, with a Wakelet collection. I'm just gonna publish and exit that now. And then very quickly, I'm gonna jump over to my Wakelet profile. Now the profile is a really important part of your Wakelet journey because it allows you to share the content that you've created. And a lot of educators, they share their Wakelet handle, just like a Twitter handle that I'm highlighting at the top here. They share their Wakelet handle with um, their students or with their community. And um, you know, when those, that student or the community views uh, the Wakelet profile, they get to see all of that content organized in a really, really cool way. And there's lots of cool things that I can do with my profile. So when I click edit, I can then reorganize my, uh, well, I can add another layer of organization into my, um, uh, my profile here. So you can see that I've got these sections here, one for music, one for climate change. I can quickly go and say this one here, how do educators use Wakelet? I'm going to change that to learning resources. That then will jump up into my learning resources area. And if I want to add a section, I can just click add a new section here and call it, let's say fun stuff. It's terrible when you misspell fun. <laughs> um, and then I can just literally add where, whatever I want to whichever section I want. So that's a really cool way of organizing your profile. And um, on that note, super quickly, just because I know that we're um, pretty tight on time, I'm gonna jump into practical ways that educators have actually been using the platform, right? So I'm gonna go to a tech uh, integration coach, Paul West. This is his Wakelet profile. And uh, Paul West is one of our Wakelet ambassadors, really active in the educator community. And he uses Wakelet in a really cool way. His Wakelet profile, is shared with so many people every day, all of the teachers that he works with in his community. And he's put together these amazing collections of resources so that teachers that he's working with can quickly go to his profile and have that trust and know that rather than Googling uh, social studies resources and you know, God knows what's gonna come up, they know that uh, Paul West has put this collection together and when I click on it, I'll get to view his curation. He's the expert. He's put this together, so it must be good. There's a really nice human trust element. And here he's used the grid view to display this content here. So on the most basic level, it's a really cool way for you to um, share and communicate resources with your learning communities and your network. 
Another really cool thing is doing um, uh, newsletters, right? So uh, whether you're a teacher or a tech coach or anything like that, you've got a community and it's really cool to put together the things that you've learned or the things that the community have learned into a Wakelet collection. It can be monthly, it can be weekly, but newsletters are really powerful. Now, this particular example is at the complete end of the scale of adult education, but there's no reason why it can't be applied to adult education as well. So Brandy Weems is a kindergarten teacher, so you're talking the youngest of the young, and um, she uses Wakelet to communicate with uh, parents. So she puts together these awesome weekly newsletters, and if I click on one of these now, this will tell the parent exactly what's happened in the class that week. Um, all of the, the key announcements, the main information, um, and then some really cool resources as well so that the uh, parents will help the students learn a little bit at home. And it's relevant to what is being studied in school. And the, it's the trust element here again. The parents really trust that you know, this content is the best content that their child can uh, learn from because it's being put together by the very same person that teaches their child. On top of that, there's awesome, huge libraries of content on, uh, on, uh, on Wakelet around so many different subjects. This is on the climate crisis. So this was a, uh, a PhD student um, at the University of Manchester. And when they were doing their thesis for the end of year exam, they found that they used Google a lot to try and find uh, the best types of resources for their research. And they thought to themselves, rather than just sticking these in a Word doc and never using them again, or just putting them in the footnotes, they're gonna use those references to create something really powerful that other generations of students are gonna be able to use. So they put together this awesome profile on Wakelet, and it, it's essentially everything that you need to know about climate change. Um, and it's put together in such a beautiful way. It includes some, some personal stories by the person who did it. There's lots of context in there. And the main part here is it's being put together by a human. It's not an algorithm that's put this together. And it, it's a human that's made these connections and it's somebody who's an expert on the subject. Um, and very quickly, I know we're jumping through loads of ideas here. We've got Julie Parsons. Julie Parsons is a, uh, a senior at uh, Selena High School. She uses Wakelet as her digital portfolio, and there are thousands of people who are using Wakelet for this reason. Um, essentially, when it comes to digital citizenship and digital literacy, it's important for people to know that the internet can be used really, really beneficially when it comes to your future. So any of the, any of the educators out there who are dealing with um, trying to get their students into work, into the world of work, this is a really cool way to do that because not everybody likes being Googled. Um, Google's not a really accurate way to find out whether or not somebody's been somewhere or done something. It's not a great way to find out their experience. Wakelet, however, it gives that very person the power to put together a portfolio that they can then send to whoever they want. So this is all the work that she's done during high school. For an adult, um, it can be all the work that they've done, um, whether it's personal projects, whether it's uh, guest blogging, whatever it is that you've done that's online that you're proud of, you can create a Wakelet portfolio out of. And the best part is, and I only found out this today, people have actually been putting this QR code on their resumes. So they send out these resumes and they just put the QR code and say, check out my uh, digital um, portfolio. And then this QR code gets scanned and they get taken, the employer or the administrator, whoever it is, gets taken to this amazing profile where they can view everything that this person is doing. So I'm, I'm sure that you guys have got plenty of questions and I know that I've showed you lots and lots of different use cases here. Um, Wakelet is a Swiss army knife when it comes to the different ways it can be used. But I would recommend that if you're dipping your foot in the water and getting started, just use it for bookmarking. Use it to um, collate resources that are valuable and meaningful to you, save them in one place and come back to them later. Or create a collection out of them and share them with people who you think are gonna benefit. Now, we've got an iOS app, we've got an Android app, we've got an iPad app, we're across everywhere and really cool. We also have the Wakelet browser extension, which is this little thing that you see here. This changes the game, right? If I'm on an article that I like, rather than having to go to Wakelet and log in and paste everything, I just click the little W there and that will open up my uh, Wakelet um, profile, my home, and I can add that resource to any one of my collections. I can edit it. And it just makes it really easy to capture content on the go. Additionally, as you can see by loads of my tabs up here, I am a, a self-confessed tabaholic. Um, there's no point in the day where I have any less than 30 tabs open on my screen until I found 
um, the new Wakelet feature, which is this. If I click new tab, and don't, don't be afraid, you can turn this off. This is only for people who want it and will find it useful. Um, if I install the browser extension, this is what I'll see when I uh, open up a new tab. And the really cool part is all of the content that I've got open, all of my tabs here, and this is really cool. I like this, I drag it to a collection. Or if I've got a whole bunch of tabs open and I think, hey, you know what? These tabs make a really good collection. I can just create a collection with the tabs. That will open up Wakelet and I can create a collection using all of the tabs which are open on my machine. So uh, like I said, I'm sure many of you have loads of questions. Um, feel free to reach out to me personally. I'll be able to tell you some more about Wakelet and show you some more examples. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop my sharing now. And um, I'm not sure if there's gonna be time for Q and A's at the end, but I'm happy to take any questions that you have. I'll share my details in the chat box. Um, over to you, I believe, uh, either Ashley or Jeffrey, whoever's up next. Ashley is up next. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yes. All right. Hold on one second. Share my screen. Okay. So I am going to, so I'm Ashley Winkle and um, I am, like Jeff said, I'm an adult educator in Tyler, Texas. And I have been using Wakelet. Um, I want to say close to a year, but somewhere in there. And the reason I even came across it was because it was an assignment I had for Tech Integration Coach to find and explore a curation tool. And I kept hearing about this um, on all the PLNs I'm on through uh, K through 12. And so once I started exploring it, I just got excited because it was a really cool, fun way to basically curate my resources in one place. But then the more I got into it, um, I discovered so much more that you could do. Um, so I'm just, what I've done is I've put together a Wakelet of um, ways to use Wakelet in adult education. And what he just shared, he just, a whole bunch of stuff I haven't even done yet. And now I'm pretty excited to do it. I'm also really excited about the new uh, read mode that they have, um, especially using it with students. So, and I'm gonna share this uh, Wakelet with you before we go today, but can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, thought I'd better check on that. Okay, so this is one that I just created um, the other night, and basically um, I put together different ways that I've used it and how I would like to use it moving forward. So the first thing is, obviously, as we've talked about, a curation of resources. So I've used it particularly with my staff. Um, at the beginning of the year, a couple of us had put together different resources to use to get, get, the, get started with the school year. So I just threw our ideas together, put it together on um, a collection. And of course, my computer's gonna move slow now, okay. And Basically, this was a quick place for everybody just to go real quick, see if there might be something they were interested in using, and grab it and just make a copy and go from there. Um, another way that I've used Wakelet is you can embed it directly onto Google Classroom. So if you're a Google Classroom user, and I know a couple of you on here are, because I know you, um, you can embed Wakelet collections directly onto Google Classroom. The example I'm going to show you is, this is actually a Google Classroom we use specifically for our HSE teachers. Um, this is a place that we do our lesson plans as well as share resources and communicate with one another. So what I was, easy, what I was easily able to do was create my collections and then from there I was able to just directly embed them into Google Classroom. And so now when teachers go, they can simply go to the resources. You can see that I recently put financial literacy on there and teachers can go on there and it takes them immediately to the Wakelet with a variety of resources to choose from. So again, that takes them and they have all these different things that they can do. And now I'm going to be the one queen of tabs over here. Um, and then a third way that I've used it for curation is just to embed it directly onto my website that I have for HyperDocs. This looks so much better than the way I had done it when I created this Google site. 
Um, this just organized it, made it very simple. It took me no time to do it because I had already put the wakelet together. And you can see it's just very nicely lined up. And then at the end, you can see that I did the whole thing using Wakelet. So that's um, just an overview on how I've basically curated resources, um, basically brought the things that I think are the best and created these lists. I do, I feel like I should explain because this has come up a few times. Um, a lot of times people don't know what curating tools are so basically it's basically taking the best of the best this is my interpretation anyway the best of the best and putting it into one place um because a lot of people didn't know what i meant when i said it and i didn't know either if you want me to be honest i had to look into it um and then another way that i've found it useful is for making tutorials and guides so this first one was actually done um for a webinar I did recently, I was asked to actually create like a how-to guide or an implementation guide for after the webinar so that people could have something that to take with them to get them started using the website. So what I had never done before, nor did I realize you could do this, but you could take a Wakelet creation or collection and turn it into a PDF and it comes out very nice, I thought, anyhow. And so you can either print it or, of course, you could just share it with them and they can access the links and that sort of a thing. Um, or you can redirect them to the original Wakelet, which is what I did here. So I included that code that he had mentioned. And um, that way, if they wanted it, they could have the digital version or they could have the PDF version as well. And then the other one was, and I recently created this for my um, HSE students. Um, we are GED specific where we are because that's the only um, test offered. So that's why it's focused mostly on GED. But what I did was I took uh, GED, uh, sorry, YouTube videos. And there's quite a few of them. And if anybody teaches GED, you know how painful it is to teach the extended response. Well, they've got some pretty nicely lined up videos. But what I did is I turned them into Edpuzzle videos, um, which if you're not familiar with Edpuzzle, they're basically interactive videos. So the students answer questions as they go throughout the videos. And then I added some resources to it. So they've got answer guidelines. And they go through each lessons each lesson and they have one place to go. What I liked about doing something like this is I was able to use it in class um, together and independently, but I, I can also use it for my distance learning students who are on their own out there and might need some additional help, not for, I'm always pointing this out, not for actual proxy hours, but be for extra help uh, with the writing, or I can really just give it to anybody who's looking for some additional help and it's something they can go back to. And then I got, I've dabbled a little bit with using Wakelet as an actual lesson in itself. So I kind of took the idea of um, if anybody's familiar with or has ever used like a hyperdoc, which is essentially a digital lesson. And I thought, I wonder if I could kind of create a Wakelet and do something like that. So I realized we were struggling with the, um, a slope lesson in math. So I thought, well, let's try something a little bit different. And so we start out with, I just kind of inserted a KWL chart so the students can just go directly to that. And that's just going to take them to a Google document. And then they go back. And for each thing, they're basically going through step by step. So again, they can work independently as well as a class. And I can also use this lesson. So this takes them to an actual video lesson to help them. Um, they have an, a warm-up activity where they go to uh, what is called formative and they answer some questions and then they go through an explanation if they need help with that. Uh, we then have a visual on the types of slope and then they make observations using a Google form. So you can see that basically what we're doing is we're basically doing a little bit of app smashing, bringing some other tools together and creating one complete lesson all together. So, and you can see then we have extra practice using of course Khan Academy. Um, and then just for fun, we went ahead and added a quizzes, another fun tool just to see what they learned. And then they go back to their KWL chart um, to revert to review, review their learning. 
And then finally we had, I also used it uh, one day. I had a sub when I had to miss class one day. And all I did was I basically put together some um, game-based uh, GED based learning practice for the students to work on the stu uh, included things like quizzes, vocab.com, um, Kahoot mobile, that sort of thing. And I gave everybody, because I have so many different people working on different uh, tests right now, I went ahead and I included each subject. That way everybody could work on what they needed help with the most. And now just moving forward, um, these are my ideas, although now that I've learned some more things, I have more ideas, but um, things that I really, really, really want to do is get the students making their own um, or collaborating, kind of like was discussed earlier. Um, I love the idea of students creating their own blogs or journals. Um, particularly, I think I would be more drawn to journals right now because I'm really trying to get students just used to the concept of writing and getting used to writing. So I think it would be great for them to watch their progress as they go. Um, also, the other thing I've really been wanting to do is have them create research. That was one of the first things. When I first talked to somebody with Wakelet, that was one of the first things we discussed. And he was telling me like how they can basically bring their research into, sorry, <laughs> bring their research into this entire um, collection so that you're actually seeing what they're using. You can see the videos, they can add images, um, and plus that you can also add the writing to it. So you can basically bring everything into one place. And then, um, so just a few pieces of advice for helping you to get started because I know we're covering a lot of information in a short period of time. Uh, one thing is they are offering, Microsoft is now offering this Surf the Five C's with Wakelet, which is basically a free course that kind of gives you a little overview and helps you get started with Wakelet. Um, it's a really nice little lesson. And there's also uh, an educator's guide to the Wakelet ebook, and they've also offered different resources for educators as well. So I will go ahead and include th my collection in the chat box. And of course, Jeff, I think, always fo sends a follow up email so he can include this as well. And I think I just got my 15 minutes in. D are there any questions? I know that was a lot of information, too. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to use the chat window for any questions you have right now, I would say please do so. Um, my piece is pretty small. Uh, it's just sort of uh, talking about what we kind of envision doing um, for some, some future sort of demonstration projects around crowdsourcing using Wakelet. But um, this is a great time. If you have any questions, can you use the chat window to ask them? Um, actually, I just, I guess I just wanted to um, ask, what, what have you found is like the, the, the most effective way of, of kind of using Wakelet? And what is it that got you um, hooked? <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is more for me. I'm just more curious because obviously the adult learning, it's not, it's not a new kind of element for us, but it's, you know, we're learning from our community and now, you're, you know, you're part of our community. You've been for a while. So i just like to hear a little bit about what is it that attracted you to Wakelet in the, in the first place. Okay. Um, actually, I was going to mention that, but I was didn't think I had time. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, I'm very visual. So when I see things that are neat and orderly and look nice and they're organized, it makes me feel good. <laughs> so that was one thing. But then what really, really got me, because I find myself using it all the time, is the, uh, the Chrome extension. Just that every time I'm on a website, I can just hit that W and I can save it to the collection in a matter of moments so that I have it and I don't lose it. I use that thing every day, all day long, I swear. Um, I absolutely love that. And then when I actually spoke with, I believe it was James in the beginning, and he showed me, it was almost kind of frustrating for me because I just saw uh, Marie put on there that she's been using Pathbrite. Well, I had just had my students make e-portfolios um, just before I had a conversation and I used Google Sites and I'm gonna tell you that was the roughest month of my life because it was just too hard for them to do the Google Sites. And when I saw the idea of doing like the same type of a thing on a Wakelet, 
that's definitely going to be a game changer for me. So overall, it's just the ease of use. Um, and I'm really excited with the, about the opportunities it's going to present to the students, especially now that you have that new read. What is it called? Read the read mode is what I keep calling it with that. I think, reader. There it is. That's what I'm trying to think of. Um, with that, I think that's going to be a huge, huge benefit to us. Awesome. All right, so still having lots of issues with my sharing. Here we go. Um, all right, so just to close it out, uh, just some of the things that we're thinking about at Crowded Learning in terms of, of ways that we could be using Wakelet. And again, I as as Ms. Um, said, like if you just want to get your feet wet and just start sort of curating things and, and finding things and just um, creating your own collections. Just for your own personal use, that's, you know, that's a great start. But in terms of our vision for how we can use this with uh, students in particular and making more resources available, again, in a nice organized way, um, both in terms of the Wakelet collection itself, but in terms of how we start organizing things, um, I see a lot of potential. So one of the things you may have heard me say in earlier webinars and recently on some links events is, we are going to begin the process of building a leveled library using reading skills for today's adults which was recently redone if you're familiar with reading skills for today's adults it's a series of about 346 readings um, and it's all organized on their site so that's great you can go there you can find the level and you can go through readings and the site itself predominantly is focused on fluency so there's audio recordings um, at different speeds for each of the stories but we thought, well, what if we wanted to create Quizlets that help students get interactive practice with the vocabulary from the stories? And what if we also wanted to have more interactive opportunities to test comprehension using Google Forms? So what if we, as a crowdsourcing project, had uh, trainings on how to use Quizlet and how to use Forms? And I know we're talking about all sorts of different tools, but if we do this collectively, it isn't that huge of a task where we have teachers work to develop, oops, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. I was moving around windows. Okay, here we go. Um, we're, oh God, it's <laughs> so sorry. I should not have made these links. Where we have teachers develop quizlets for each story and we have uh, teachers who might wanna develop these comprehension quizzes for each story as well. So that's great, but now you have three different things in three different places and Wakelet allows us to pull those things together into one so that that leveled library can have the student launch into any of these three options for developing vocabulary, for developing their fluency, and for developing their comprehension. So it's all interactive. Students can access it anytime, anywhere, and it's mobile friendly. I think that is, is one sort of incredible opportunity that we have to sort of test this crowdsourcing theory, but also to just sort of show the power of Wakelet within the adult education community. And then also, if you're familiar with Crowded Learning at all, you know that we have been taking um, all sorts of different free and open education resources and providing alignments to those to the standards. Well, those are all separate documents that you have to go to and find those resources. Now, we are pulling those together into sort of an aggregated database so that at some point soon, you'll be able to actually see for a skill the different resources from CK12 or from Khan Academy or from FET that all align to the same skill. But again, Wakelet provides that additional sort of step of pulling all those things together in one place so that learners are given more options. Um, and so here are some examples that, uh, that just actually sort of talking about what I just walked through um, for that uh, reading skills for today's adult um, idea. Here is a story from that library that we have taken. And again, this wakelet includes a reading passage, a vocabulary activity, and a vocabulary quiz. So now they can go into an interactive vocabulary um, set of Quizlet uh, flashcards. They can read the story, um, and they can access this Google form to test their comprehension of the story. And again, just to, to give some, I didn't, my, my mouse is very sensitive here. Um, to give some context to what Misva had just said. So here is that library, Reading Skills for Today's Adults, that many of you are familiar with. This read mode, like literally, first time I saw it today was, uh, was today when Misva showed it. 
and you see it, it, it puts it into its own sort of screen. So here is the reading. Now it does get a little wonky because they have these line counts that are also sort of um, on their site, but the reading, it, it strips it of everything else and they can just focus on the reading. And again, as he said, if we go to immersive reader, that gives us even more options we can, um, that, that deal with a lot of different accessibility um, options in terms of text size, in terms of contrast, in terms of actually having the, the sort of word by word reading that might be necessary for some, some readers. So super, super accessible tool um, that they've now built into each of their wakelets. And I think that's, that's a fantastic addition. Um, and just to show you how simple uh, this sort of process is in thinking about how we curate. So I've created a, a collection here um, that has nothing in it, right? And so this is multi-step equations. I happen to know the standard because I was prepared to do this. And my internet connection is really good here, so I feel like I can do it. But if I was to go to Crowded Learning site, um, we have these alignments for various resources, right? So Khan Academy, you know what that is. It's video lessons and there's lots of practice activities and we have alignments of the practice activities. Uh, CK12 has great collections of resources around specific skills. So if I wanted to combine those into a single wakelet, um, all I would have to do is find the particular standard that I want in, in this spreadsheet. And this is right now, again, skill box selection, aggregate these. Now, presumably you will actually be going and, and checking out the resource before you would assign it to students. But all I have to do once I've found this resource and go, okay, I could assign this entire CK12 set, um, or I could go specifically just to the reading. Um, maybe that's all I want to have students go to. So I can go to the specific resource or the entire collection. I just click on the Wakelet icon, that plugin that uh, was shown earlier, and I basically select the, um, the collection that I wanted in. I can add my own directions within here and then I just say save and now it is adding it to that multi-step equations um, lesson and same thing for if I go to my Khan Academy alignments now again I want to find that same standard so I could do a control find and just look for 7EE4 because I happen to know the standard that I'm doing now Khan Academy has a bunch of different practice sets uh, related to the standard but again I can click on the link it's going to take me to that resource I can preview that resource and see that it's something that I want to do with my students or have my students um, uh, go through within the collection. Again, I click on the plugin. I can, um, it'll then give me this option. I can add my own directions. And then again, click on this particular collection that I want and I can search, uh, which makes it a lot easier once obviously you start adding a lot of collections save it and now suddenly uh, both of those resources you don't see them yet but if I refresh this both of those resources will be in this collection now I might want to do some customization within there but it's a really quick way to take these alignment documents that have been um, created and to pull them together into wakelets now I've gone through and I'm going to share some wakelets that I've done um, myself where you know I've added some directions, I've added some details uh, within the wakelet to sort of have just a kickoff for the student, um, some vocabulary activities. Now this is a site called Math is Fun that has just great sort of quick pages on different vocabulary terms and you can search by standard within their site. And then again, giving learners different options for learning the skill, for practicing the skill, and uh, doing, doing all sorts of things. So we, we see that there's lots of ways that Wakelet can be used to pull these things together. I love the idea of, of doing some sort of future explorations with folks on this webinar and beyond in terms of seeing what is a good format for say a student facing Wakelet. What does that look like? And then how could we work together to say this is the desired format and get sort of volunteers working together to create uh, a library of collections using a particular format. Again, just adding that layer of organization and having us all focus on, on building out resources together in ways that, that are accessible to anyone, anywhere. Um, so that's my little spiel, and I am super excited to explore more and to talk more with anyone on here. Um, 
again, there will be a follow-up email that has a bunch of the things that we talked about and some of the things that we didn't for you to explore. But we do have four minutes, which is a rarity on any webinar I ever give. So uh, if there are any questions right now, would love to answer them. So again, please use the chat uh, window to ask any questions you might have. Uh, I just guys are all in. shy today. <laughs> I just want to jump in and break the silence a little bit. Um, I, I really love everything that you've shown, um, Ashley and Jeffrey. Honestly, I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes. And um, just for everybody joining us in, in the, uh, the, the, the chat today, um, if anybody wants to know anything more about Wakelet, uh, or join the community or kind of get involved with what we're doing, um, please just reach out to me or just reach out to us on Twitter. Like, we're extremely responsive. Um, you know, we, 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 we like to think of everybody as a family and um, any questions that you have, uh, and after you've used the platform for a while, any feedback or suggestions that you have, we have a very, very humble type of uh, attitude, I guess, the way that we do things. We don't kind of sit in a room and decide things. Um, every feature that we put out, everything that we do, it all comes from educators like yourself. So um, we take your suggestions and your feedback super seriously and um, we've got a really fun community that, that we'd love for all of you to join. So um, yeah, I'm, I've had a really, really cool time here, Jeffrey. It's been amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking time. I know it's a little later there. Um, and thank you for this amazing tool. I see so much potential. And I'm excited again to uh, get folks going. Ashley, thank you as always for um, for sharing all of the amazing things that you're doing with your students with technology. All right, and I am going to end this on time, even early. Thanks everyone for joining today, and uh, we'll be in touch.